everybody. My name is Alan, and again, on behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, as we go through this life, as we go through all the seeming ups and downs in this life, there is a constant. There is a constant behind all the seeming changes, and that constant, you know, I mean, that's what we talk about on the show all the time. The constant is that the one love, is that what everything is made of is that vibration, that light, that sound of love. And in a human body, when we can experience that light and love and vibration, it just changes the way we can experience to live in a human body. And tonight, again, we have a show where people's lives are dedicated to the realization for themselves and for everyone they come in contact with of that oneness, of that truth, of that transcendental experience where joy and love are just the the manifestations of that and the experience of that. I mean, one of our favorites, I guess she's on every season, I don't know whether it's the sixth or seventh or eighth show, but Claire Hart songs with us. I mean, everybody, when we get letters and calls, and everybody says, when's Claire coming back on? And so every season, when, we, when we're on the break, we call and say, you know, what's the, the date that Claire can come on? And we always seem to find it, I think, every season except one so far. She's a teacher and a healer. And we've been with Claire through just tremendous integrations and movements through so many experiences through Saint Germain and the Hathors and Anna of Carmel. And tonight she's with us to an expansion of all that. Not that those are excluded, but to expand on that, to, to let that love grow, to let that connection grow, to experience all those things coming more into a one in her life and to her to come out as a teacher and vibrate that. Uh, she's going to be talking and, and doing in a, some way about a ceremony of an original innocence. And she's also going to do a, a Sahuka ceremony, and we'll talk about that and, and how that is a synthesis of, of different paths and different experiences. And, and basically, we're going to talk about how to have all these experiences and yet know the one, to come into the experience of the one, that all these are tools and all the teachers, true teachers, are tools for all of us to come into that experience of the love, of the truth, of the one, the one love. And we are all that same love. We are all that heart. And, and really, that's what the show is about. And we have with us, too, another old friend of ours who's been on the show before, Earthstar, who's a mystical dancer and just a delightful being who brings her love into that movement and into that grace. And she's going to be doing dancing to two songs, uh, uh, that uh, were written by Leslie and I. I think I spoke about them on the uh, show last week. Uh, the new album we put out, Leslie of Bridging Heaven and Earth. And two of the songs that uh, Earthstar is going to be dancing to are from that CD that's going to be out very soon. Or when you watch it, it could be out already. So we're just delighted to come to you once again and to come to that love. And once again, let me say that all your calls and emails, I mean, just before we did this show, I just called my house and I realized that there were two calls from New York City about a guest we had on about six months ago because as the tapes rotate around the country and, and to have that inspiration and to have that love return to us is just really it's so important for us to have that so again thank you for doing that settle in enjoy this show and as we normally do at this time to set a certain vibration for the show Join me in a short meditation, and then we'll begin with Earth Star Dancing. Please. Thank you. So we're going to start tonight's show with Earth Star performing a, and a magnificent dance, and the music is by Lesia, and it's from the new album, Lesia Bridging Heaven and Earth. Mm. 
has a tab of song and celebration from the early dawn until the night. Now the time that we can all rejoice is the festival of light. Every shining star up in the heavens, every friendly smile. Welcome. So we're on the set okay. with Claire. Welcome, Claire. Welcome. It's wonderful to be with you again, Alan. Yeah. Always. It's great so, fun. Thank you, Earth Star. Magnificent. That beautiful? Yes. Yeah, that was great. So tell us, I mean, you know, you've, as I said in the opening, you've taken us through all the journeys. And uh, how did you get to the journey of the, the, uh, the original innocence? And tell us a little bit about that. Well, first of all, um, in the journey with, with Saint Germain and the Hathors and um, in this great in desire that I have to truly return into the knowingness of the one that we all are, the many and the one, and the love that radiates through the one heart. And a, a great desire to heal my own heart in that space where I've perceived in separation, a, a, an enormous desire to return to a sense of innocence. 
So, of course, what we ask for, we receive. And uh, one day, uh, several months ago, I was uh, working on the editing of uh, Anna's story, which is about to be finished. And um, I heard uh, Anna say to me, there's some new codes coming and some activation of codes. Within hours, a phone call came from Juliet Carter, who uh, lives in Glastonbury, England. She was passing through the country, had received my name, came to Mount Shasta, and uh, the bells rang, uh, and it was the opportunity to uh, be fully engaged in this particular work that she's been gifting. So why don't you describe it? What What is the... Well, uh, first of all, as, as the cameras are look, gathering the pictures over here on the other side of the room, the picture in the center is the logo that Juliet has chosen for her work. And um, the uh, picture to the right indicating the figure, the human figure, with the interconnecting grids of light. And um, all of this is a representation of the uh, circuitry through which the all that is, the one, uh, communicates with itself through the many expressions of itself. And um, in most of our experience as human beings, I, I would think that we, most of us, realize that we're functioning on less than our po full potential, right? I would say that. <laughs> if we know it's the denial theory of right. life. <laughs> so so uh, uh, the scientists are finding what they call junk DNA, you know, and, and those uh, neurosurgeons uh, who explore have explored consciousness in terms of neurophysiology have found, you know, enormous amounts of gray matter that what is it used for? So um, in the understanding of innocence and the one at play in order to come to understand itself, there's been an experiment within that the one mind to let's see what it would be like once we have already come up with the idea of a mirror in order to be in relationship with, what would happen if we really stretch that rubber band to its utmost extremity and then confront uh, self in the opposite mirror at its most, uh, um, uh, let's say, the most extreme expression of, of so-called separation. What would that look like? Well, we would have... Brooklyn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> New York <laughs> City, what's the problem? <laughs> Bring up the video of New York City. <laughs> Children shooting them, themselves right. and their teachers and so right. on. A, a, a tremendous amount of, of discord and, 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 and disharmony and suffering. Disease and, and all the uh, disses. <laughs> so now that we have reached the furthest limit or, and the one, that we are has reached that limit, it's now a time of bringing that self that has forgotten, that it has never left home, and yet has been on this wild toad's ride adventure, and now we're returning home. Now it's time to reconnect the wiring, if you will, and to plug in and return to that place of the original blueprint of our magnificence and know that truly uh, the whole notion was in innocence, has always been in innocence, no matter how it has displayed itself. And, and what's the theory on how the disconnection happened? Well, there are some who would say that there's been some manipulation, some genetic engineering. Uh, quite purposefully done. And in the understanding of the of polarity and that we are indeed all of it, and acknowledging and taking full responsibility as creator and creation, then we can begin to understand that we 
facilitated not only the experiment into the extremity of, of separation by disconnecting some of these circuits so we can, let's see how much we can experience on just a little trickle of, of the juice. And what uh, would happen? And what would happen is the ability to procreate and uh, to just basically put one foot in front of the other, mm -hmm. as we've been doing for eons. Mm -hmm. And now it's time, as uh, our hearts, our minds, this deep yearning, the call of the self from the far side of itself, now beginning to come closer and closer. And we're, we've all been hearing the uh, coming shift of the ages the uh, the coming time of December 21st, 2012. Right now we're at the midpoint between harmonic convergence where there was an enormous shift in consciousness, mass consciousness. And now in the remaining 12 years of that 24 year period, we're in an exponential quantum leap. And so many, many, many opportunities are coming because humanity is being heard and those of us in our more expanded consciousness are responding to this the self that it is uh in its state of amnesia and and yet it's awakening awakening and now it's time and we're graduating from from uh, childhood and adolescence now to a, a state of taking full ownership as creators and so this, this the ceremony of, of original innocence is a way and, and a tool to connect exactly the to connect some of the basic circuits so there are 12 basic circuits that at this time are being reconnected there is also a 13th circuit that when there are enough it's about numbers not so much about individuals as a percentage of humanity who are sufficiently prepared and can capacitate the parting of the veil so that rather than that tiny slice of the true reality that we've been perceiving through our uh, lens of perception, that is going to, at that time of the 13th being reconnected and activating all 12, is going to blow the, the the circuitry it's it, the whole it, it, paradigm the, that we live going under. to blow the paradigm of separation and we're going to know ourselves as we truly are and the desire is not to blow the circuitry but rather to begin to capacitate the circuitry on the physical emotional mental to expand levels. the cup of our experience exactly and to return to the state of stillness the state of knowingness that that truly we're all one, all is well, there's nothing to fear any longer. And we're claiming that uh, those projections now and transmuting them. And this ceremony, how would, how does it proceed? I mean, how, when so this is a process that you've been going around recently yes. in the last, you yes. took a training course from this From woman, Juliet, Juliet Carter, Carter, who lives in Glastonbury, yes. England. Yeah. And, um, Yes, and I, I, with individuals and with groups who feel the call that this particular body of work uh, will answer their desire. It's one of the spokes on the for, wheel. For coming right. for this sense of knowing that, right. that uh, they're ho home at last. And uh, so we work with uh, the five elements, beginning with water then uh, air and earth, fire and ether. And within each of these five elements are uh, certain circuits. For example, the water circuits are located on the sternum between this point and here. And the first water circuit is, uh, um, for example, equated to the same sex parent and the emotion that often is held here is anger. 
So when the circuit because is... Because of, of the, the, the inherent jealousy and the inherent the sense desire of, for of, the mother's of uh, love, love. And that perhaps that love was not met and, and felt by the child. By the same sex parent. Right. And then the next circuit is the creative circuit, which would be the opposite sex parent. And what's held here is the um, a sense of guilt and regret. Then there's the thymus gland, which we all know uh, produces T cells and uh, facilitates our uh, immune system. And the T cells are like innocent eavesdroppers. And when, if we perceive a world that's hostile and non-supportive of us, many of us are very sensitive to that. And we began to say, I do not want to be here. This is, uh, this is not the place that I can really feel the love that I remember as spirit in, in a lighter mm -hmm. Uh, expression and I'm not, I'm not so sure I really want to go down into this place where I'm going to forget who I am mm -hmm. for, for a while and so then the thymus and the pituitary gland in conjunction began to secrete hormones that began to affect and accommodate that the disease that, that, that would make this body leave exactly or the aging process right. that would simply facilitate that that uh, choice to not be here. It's a very neutral. It's not good or bad. Now, in this ceremony, when you've done this ceremony, you've seen extraordinary things happen when all the the connections are made. Yes, I, in myself and with others, I've begun to experience that there's a heightened state of inner authority, uh, inner authenticity, one's inner knowing and and voice and capacity to pass through the storms of life as the old paradigm of separation and fear-based consciousness meets us, we, it, it, for myself, it's like I can return to a space of love with greater ease and knowing the, um, the vibration that this is that is now being embraced and brought into the heart of love. So in other words, somehow this ceremony brings people into the experience of love. Exactly. <laughs> That's what all of this is about, wow. Alan, and, right. and we're just finding many of us, in, as the one, ways of entertaining ourselves and finding various vehicles in which we can simply uh, remember the love that and home that we've never and left. Manifest it exactly. In all the ways we play. In all the ways that we choose to play and create indeed now a harmonious and beautiful world. Miracles, just right. as Earth Star and, and Lesia have uh, and you have written about. Well actually that was and funny, that's but, uh, <laughs> I'm not very pleased about it, but we couldn't help but put it on the album so, uh, It is. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we were just taking these different routes through uh, the, the terrain of consciousness. The one is doing that. And uh, there are many, many uh, paths that in the past were extending out. Now those paths are converging and, and bringing us back. At the same time, we're beginning to realize that indeed we are all of it. So the sense of the Divine Mother whose uh, presence I know is vital to the homecoming is the capacity with the Christ energies of the heart to begin to embrace and be all everything inclusive. inclusive. Everything, no right. thing will be left behind. This is no longer a time of transcendence. It's a time of full embrace and uh, bringing home all of our creation and assisting our creation that is holding, grasping to its identity in uh, separation, to know that that expression of, of I am, even if it's an I am not, that has created a great deal of suffering, can now relax and know its divinity. Because it's time. It's time for that. <laughs>
Actually, it's over time. We're over. We're over. We're over. We're over ripe. We're we're fruit definitely so, ready so, for the plucking. And and now all the things that even in terms of our expansion, in a sense, still resulted in separation. Even those are breaking now. Like people becoming attached to a path or a lineage or a guru or a, a certain. You know, I, I follow this, the uh, ceremony of original innocence mm -hmm. that the experience of the right. one, of the love, is so strong exactly. that, that anything that's not in that doesn't make, it doesn't compute. Those, those There's nothing are, that can be outside that. Exactly. Once we began to truly come back into our, uh, the original innocence that we, that we are and we know the oneness that we are, it, uh, there's no longer any requirement for external teachers or anything external from ourself as a way of, of beginning to mirror our divinity. Yet that, that path, all of those adventures and experiences have served and are divine. Now we're at a time of profound destructurization and that which has been most hidden, that which has been cloaked, that which has been denied, and uh, any, any, anything of that sort now is coming to the light of consciousness. The higher we go, also the lower we go into the depths of the, su of, of the subconscious. That which has been in darkness is now coming to light. So those who are the gurus, those who have been the leaders that we have invested in in the past have many times given our power away, yet that has served us. Now, even they are beginning to, uh, those various human qualities within them, as we've talked earlier without naming names, all of that's beginning to r arise now so that we can begin to realize, gee, you are you, you know, reclaim. The, yeah, instead our, of guru, right? Yeah, I don't know. Re <laughs> got that, so I to... And reclaim the uh, our the sovereignty. It's not that that separation is bad. There's no good and bad. Ultimately, there's only innocence in within the play, and there's that which empowers and that which disempowers. And we're moving more and more into a choice of empowerment at this time. And uh, so it is that we are uh, claiming our individuation and sovereignty, and we're knowing the oneness, the unity at the same time. I think the way it actually works is you have to get the reins of your life to turn them over, to let go of them. Exactly. I mean, if you're not, you're, right. then you're flopping around, the horses are riding everywhere, but once you got the yes. reins, you go, <laughs> there is no me to hold them. I mean, you know, yes. in and, that way. And, and then, it's like more and more paradox. We can also let go of the reins. We can take the bridle off the horse and give the horse much, much more, more free. freedom right. to, to move. And in that right. spaciousness, spaciousness, we can relax right. and open. And love. And love. Right. Yeah. That's all there is. Okay, so I guess we're ready for Earth Star again. Uh, the first number was magnificent. Uh, so this time Earth Star is going to dance to uh, Sunrise. And we just heard the opening chord, and it's a very beautiful opening chord, and we'll hear it again any second. So this is going to be performed by Earth Star, Sunrise, the music is by Lessie and myself, and it's from the new album, Lessie, A Bridging Heaven and Earth. Okay, let's hear it again from the top. Go! <laughs> Can be so hard here. 
Yeah, thank you, Arsha. That was magnificent. Uh, so mm -hmm. we're back on the set with Claire. So what is this new thing? I mean, I know you were doing the ceremony of original linens, but this other type of process, uh, sahuka? It's, Do I pronounce it wrong? If talking, <laughs> I'm like, as everyone knows, if there's any word that's not like the or ad. <laughs> I don't even say you it with do, a Brooklyn you accent. You do have a talent. <laughs> what is it? Beluka. Beluka. <laughs> what is it? Sahu. Sahuka. No. Sahu. Sahu. Ka. That was close. Sahuka. Sahuka. <laughs> now, what is Sahuka? Sahu. Ka. Emphasize the ka. Sahu ka. Yes, there you go. <laughs> well, the show's All over with right. the whole second half was me trying to learn a pronunciation. You obviously have. All right. Um, many, uh, many of our viewers are aware that um, I have been working with the Hathors now for uh, 14 years. And the Hathors, uh, down there at the end, if you'd like to get a, a picture of those. Uh, wondrous beings, uh, masters of love and sound. What is that, number four in the corner uh, over there? Four in the corner over mm -hmm. there, the sculpture from Egypt. And um, these wondrous beings uh, have facilitated the opening of my throat chakra to, uh, to express what is called toning. And uh, in, in the process of toning, it facilitates an, a an expansion of my consciousness and a uh, an opening of my heart, and the the Hathors have facilitated in conjunction with two other lineages that stem from the Orient. First of all, Tibetan Tantric Buddhism, demonstrated here by Tara who is uh, the one who's particularly involved in bringing forth this particular work. And then the Taoist uh, tradition symbolized by the yin-yang symbol in the middle. And this body of work is a synthesis of these three streams of spiritual practice to facilitate the realization of what the Egyptians call the Sahu. So we're going to come here now and we've got a, a shadow cast. Is that going to be all right for our viewers? Do you have well, okay. here, talk well, it about is it. what it so is. The Hathors are on the screen now. Okay. And then we'll go to the other one. Uh -huh. That's the Hathors. And then we're going to come over here to number one. And now the Ka body is a is what the Egyptians often called the etheric twin or the spiritual double and it's it superimposes and and penetrates the entire physical body this thin line that you see going around this picture this lovely picture by Alex Gray it represents uh, the Ka body the Ka body resides in a realm of pure light, sound, and color. It's the same realm where the ascended masters dwell and the beings such as the Hathors also dwell. And in, the, uh, in this practice of developing the Ka body to become more vital, stronger, it then begins a process that once it is connected with the higher self, which the Egyptians call the Ba, it's uh, the celestial soul that's located right up here above the head, then when that connection occurs, then elixirs begin to be secreted within the center of the brain. And when those elixirs uh, are secreted, in that instant, there begins to be what is called enlightenment. The Egyptians call it the uraeus, this halo that begins to form. Um, the, uh, the Taoists call it mounting the dragon. The Tibetan Buddhists uh, call it the, the rainbow body. 
and it the masters such as a Jesus or any of the the saints when you see a halo around their head or pictures of the pharaohs of Egypt with the hooded cobra at their forehead this would, re would represent that they had attained the sahu the great glorious body of light and um, this body of work has been coming together as a synthesis through Tom Kenyon, who has had also an intimate relationship with the Hawthors over the years, and many, many years of meditation and direct experience through Tibetan Tantric Buddhism and Taoist practices. So he's bringing these threads together. And this resonates very clearly for me as, again, a, a vehicle that the one can take to experience itself. Now, through. is this, is there some complementary effect? I mean, a, a lot of things are complementary between the ceremony of original innocence and the connection of all the, the 12 yes. energy centers and yes. then being able to experience Exactly, it. because uh, in both, there is a very fundamental focus on the DNA, the human DNA, and facilitating the genetic codes. We're all coded with, with resurrection and ascension, the uh, enlightenment process. And it's simply a matter of really opening that valve that we had talked about earlier. We, 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 we right. have managed a way of really closing that valve. Let's see how uh, alive we can make, be and, and only run on a trickle. Now we're slowly opening that valve in a very safe, harmonious way so that we don't blow the circuit, so that we don't create a psychotic break. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's too an, it's traumatic. Too traumatic. Too, 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 open exactly. All so we're desiring to do this in as direct a way as possible because in a sense, as time is dissolving, space as we've known it is shifting, our identities as we've known them are shifting. What's required now is, is doing a, a practices, if we feel called to do that, that will take us as quickly as possible through the, the illusion of separation, bring us to oneness, and, um, and bring us home uh, with all of our capacities and um, realizations fully realized in a, in a very harmonious and joyful, blissful way. And then, as the, um, the Tibetan Buddhists in their contemplation of highest Tantra say, as do the Taoists, all is emptiness, emptiness is form, and form is emptiness, neither real nor unreal, both existing and non-existing, by nature self-luminous and self-liberating. And so I feel like what I would like to do at this point is to acknowledge the energies of Tara as a representation of the, of the Divine Mother, and, and facilitate a chant. She's one who did actually have a physical incarnation and reached Buddhahood. And um, so let us uh, acknowledge Tara at this time, and we're going to um, bring the camera on to Tara, and That's you'll okay. notice that Tara has three eyes, uh, the two physical eyes at the head and then one on the forehead representing the opening of the third eye. Then there are eyes on her hands and also on the soles of her feet. And you who are viewing the picture as you attune with me to the chant and you desire to look at these eyes, you might imagine that there's a clear blue light emanating through those eyes directly into your heart. So taking a deep, full inhalation. 
and centering in your heart. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Soha Om Tare Tu Tare Is there a specific intention, like that's supposed to balance the third chakra and ninth chakra? <laughs> it, for me, facilitates a going inward and being still. And in the, in the stillness, also in that, fo in, it's a focusing and it's a relaxing at the same time that allows me to move into a sense of spaciousness. And as I a, let, a letting go, a letting okay. go of my uh, my identity and the mind chatter, and there's an opening that begins to occur in the heart and within the brain centers, and a, a, a downpouring of love that begins to emanate and a remembrance. It's a homecoming in that instant, and. In, within that sense of spaciousness, there's a delicious bliss as the bliss and the emptiness are held simultaneously. And in, in those, that kind of practice, the endocrine system and the genetic codes are fired and strengthened and revitalized, and all of that begins to support the process of bringing more, actually it's allowing more and more light to come in to that which has, has previously held itself very, very tight and contained. You know, all of us, including myself, from time to time are control freaks. I don't suppose you are, Alan. You, you probably don't go in, uh, in, in that place. What, what, what can the control <laughs> In fact, you're probably one of the most laid back people I know. Sometimes when I talk about you, I say, if you were any more laid back, you'd be in a coma. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know whether that's a compliment or not, but we'll leave it for now. <laughs> we'll get into this later. <laughs> All right, so, moving into the coma stage. <laughs> which it, it, that relaxation, which really allows our our self to to be more fully in the creator and creation state, is uh, what ultimately facilitates this uh, awakening of the sahu and the strengthening of the ka body, which goes with us beyond beyond physical death. It remains conscious. It, it, in a sense, the aspect of ourself that is our personality, that is our unique identity, when it is fully aligned with our celestial soul and those higher frequencies of, of our beingness that have the overview, then uh, we can continue for indefinitely, it's immortal, and eventually that that uh, particular body will begin to dissolve and go back into the void until the uh, the creator within the void begins to pulse a new creation. 
So in terms of the Tibetan Buddhist uh, tradition, we are working with three realms of consciousness, that which we call the physical realm of form, where, of where we're experiencing the play, and um, that's called the Nirmanakaya. And uh, that is, in a sense, kind of a trick of our nervous system that allows the, the, the smorgasbord, the banquet of, of the experience of mirroring and interacting in, in all of the ways that we have ever been able to imagine. And then there is that, that realm of increasing oneness and unity consciousness where there is a, an enormous amount of compassion as well as a sense of detachment around all this because really it doesn't matter. And it does. And in that realm, this Sambhagaya realm, uh, then there's the opportunity to, when we're in that place, to begin to create the more physical realm, a new world, uh, the, heaven on earth. the heaven on earth, from that perspective. And then as we reach into that place of pure consciousness, the Dharmakaya, uh, then we realize that state of Brahma and we can rest there knowing we're always resting there and simultaneously gathering ourselves uh, into the Sambhagaya realms of pure light, sound and color and sacred geometries often when one's visit in their consciousness that realm. It's a beautiful place of, of sound and exquisite uh, music of the spheres and and a realm of sacred geometries dancing as the camera was was moving and flowing with earth stars dance there we can begin to penetrate and move into that that exquisite place and begin to remember it while at the same time here we are in the divine experience of physicality as well so we can be here, be in love, be in the conscious, and play. Yes, <laughs> yes, just as simple as that. Whatever vehicle we choose, while we're choosing to be the, be our own entertainment, in a sense, right? The entertainers and the entertained. Um, it's a wonderful place to be. And I, yeah, it's always seemed to me is like, you know, it really is heaven on earth here, I and mean, there's so much right. bounty and. You know, the only reason we don't experience the bounty is because we there's one problem, and that's experiencing that we're separate, and that's yes. the illusion. Right. That's the leela, right. as they call it. That's right. the joke here. And then we're coming in through all these different tools and all these different exactly. teachers and teacher students, however that works. Mm -hmm. without, you know, I would say, uh, you know, inspirational play work you know, right. rather than right. the work. I mean, work right. is another concept. Yeah. Another thing that I would like to to pose here is that we're coming to a time where we're healing various splits. We were talking about the guru devotee split, the teacher uh, student. We're coming into a time of, of true equality and egalitarian restructuring of the old paradigm. And also we're healing a split between the esoteric and the exoteric um, uh, spirituality, the outer church, and and the the political games that have been imposed and we've experienced within that divine play, and then those who sometimes considered themselves the elite, the privileged, the learned, the, the learned, and uh, the all-knowing uh, in terms of the esoteric, and who did a great deal, and and, and it was appropriate to uh, allow the student or the initiate to approach when ready and to not do it before there was readiness. And so there was certain, certainly a requirement to maintain the teachings as, as pristine and purely as possible and to do that through certain levels of secrecy and veiling. However, humanity as the 
the second coming of the Christ, the, 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 the collective avatar, if you will, the return of the Buddha, all of us reaching these states of enlightenment. At this time, we are now approaching that great door, and above it, know thyself, and we're, we're ready to enter in. And so these gifts are coming, we're becoming our own guru, our own teacher, and that which would, and, and uh, um, healing that split. Did, did you want to do a short little, like near the a, end of the show? Sure. The little uh, a, little, uh, uh, a little guided meditation here. Yeah, it's going to have so, to be very short. Very quick. All right. So, once again, if you will bring your awareness at this time into the center of your head, imagining a white light, and then bringing your awareness to your throat, imagining a red light, to your heart, imagining a blue light, and to your solar plexus, imagining a yellow light. And I'm going to sound what are called seed syllables, Om, Ah, Hum, Ra. Om, ah, hum, ra, om, ah, hum, as the sounds of awakening continue in your awareness. Well, we're coming to the end. Earth Star, Claire, good night, God bless you. Be in the love, that's what it's about. Good night. <laughs>